In this video, we'll discuss some important updates in the bikey and crime world across various Australian states. We'll update you on the latest arrest of Fink bikies in Victoria, followed by the arrest of a senior ex-Bonditos member in Sydney. Plus, we'll cover the recent deportation of a notorious drug kingpin and the new developments in the investigation of the murder of a notorious Melbourne bikey. So let's get started. The first update is from Melbourne where seven members of the Finks MC have been charged for riding their motorcycles along the South Bank Promenade on August 9, 2024. The group, which included some senior members like the National President and the World Member, rode through crowded pedestrian areas, forcing people to move aside as they navigated the footpath in fully patched Finks gear. A video of them riding went viral and reached the authorities. Following which, the detectives from Victoria Police's Echo Task Force, along with other units, conducted 11 raids at various locations and arrested the bikies. They face charges of reckless conduct endangering serious injury and riding on a path. Their motorcycles and Fink's vests were seized, and they are set to appear in court on November 21, 2024. Compared to stricter states like New South Wales, Queensland and Western Australia, where bikey association laws are more aggressive, Victoria's approach is somewhat less restrictive, focusing more on targeted actions rather than blanket prohibitions. This recent crackdown highlights the state's balance between disrupting bikey activities and allowing some freedom of association. Next update is from West Pennant Hills in Sydney where John Fahey, a former sergeant-at-arms of the Bonditos Bikey Club, was arrested for allegedly assaulting a man at a hotel in Greystains on August 16, 2024. Fahey, 48, is accused of punching and stomping on the head of a 39-year-old man, who was hospitalized with serious injuries. Following an investigation, Fahey was arrested by Raptor squad officers and charged with reckless wounding and affray. The video released by New South Wales Police shows Fahey, handcuffed and wearing a Givenchy sweatshirt, being escorted to the police wagon by Raptor squad officers. He was denied bail and appeared in Parramatta local court. In May 2023, Jason Fahey, former Bonditos national president and John's younger brother, caused a stir when his switch to the Hells Angels, given John's long-standing ties to the Bonditos. Jason now holds a senior role with the Hells Angels, who are aggressively expanding in Sydney. John who was previously the Bonditos National Sergeant at Arms, still has connections with the Hells Angels but still sports extensive Bonditos tattoos. The brothers' pasts are closely linked to club life, with John reportedly defecting to the Hells Angels in 2013, though his current status remains uncertain. Both grew up in Sydney's Northwest, with John excelling in sports before joining the Bonditos. Over the years, John has faced public disputes, arrests, and police encounters but claims to have moved on from club life. Meanwhile, Jason's transition to the Hells Angels has surprised many, as police and underworld figures expect more bikey defections due to instability within rival clubs like the Comanchero. The next update comes from Lebanon, where a new photo of Rafat Alamadine has surfaced on the social media. The leader of the Alamadine crime network, is lavishly living in Lebanon despite two arrest warrants issued by New South Wales police. In the photo he is seeing chilling in the pool with his cousin Shailen Zarika. Alamadine fled Sydney in early 2023 and has remained overseas. His alleged involvement includes orchestrating attacks against rival Ibrahim Hamzi, particularly through a group chat called Lucky Last. NSW police believe Alamadine's crew attempted multiple assassination attempts on Hamzi and were responsible for the 2021 double murder of Salim and Tufak Hamzi. Alamadine's associates, including John Ray Bezari, are also wanted for their involvement in the plots. The fourth update involves Angelo Pandelli, a notorious Australian drug lord and senior Hells Angels member, who was deported from Dubai and arrived in Sydney on September 7, 2024. Pandelli had been living in a 10 million euro mansion in Dubai since 2018, was sent back to Australia quietly. The Australian Federal Police confirmed his deportation with a brief statement saying that an Australian man, 53, has been deported by Dubai authorities. No further comment will be made at this time. Known as one of Australia's top cocaine and methamphetamine importers, Pandeli has collaborated with the Kinahan cartel to smuggle drugs from South America to Europe. His deportation follows his recent arrest and an ongoing investigation into international drug trafficking. Although Pandeli is currently in Australia, he has not been charged, and additional details are awaited. Despite being a major target for the AFP, he was only briefly questioned and then released without arrest. The AFP has indicated they have coverage of him but has not pursued further action. With Pandeli's return to Sydney, his exact whereabouts remain uncertain. 
This situation is confusing and raises concerns about the coordination between the AFP and NSW police, as well as the overall effectiveness of their efforts against organized crime. The next update is on the Westdale Dirt Drags, an event organized by the Gypsy Jokers MC, which is now set to go ahead, despite growing concerns from local law enforcement and the WA Police Commissioner Carl Blanche. The two-day festival, known for its dirt drag races and burnout competitions, has been running for more than a decade and attracts hundreds of bikies from various motorcycle clubs, alongside thousands of spectators. The Gypsy Jokers prefer to host the event in the remote shire of Beverly on their own property, distancing it from more regulated venues such as city drag strips and motorplexes. This event's approval gained significant attention after police urged the Shire of Beverly to deny approval for the gathering, citing its association with outlaw motorcycle clubs and the potential for heightened safety risks. Commissioner Blanche expressed concerns that the event would strain police resources and lead to public safety issues. Despite these warnings, the Beverly Council unanimously approved the festival, drawing criticism from law enforcement and even Premier Roger Cook, who voiced his disappointment with the decision. The Westdale Dirt Drags is expected to generate significant revenue for the Gypsy Jokers, with entry fees alone projected to bring in over $100,000. This estimate comes from the thousands of attendees paying $50 per ticket and additional fees for participating in motorsport competitions. Notably, the event operates on a cash-only basis, making the festival a substantial source of direct cash flow for the club. Given its long history and loyal following, this event is considered one of the Gypsy Jokers' more lucrative ventures, further contributing to their financial interests in Western Australia. Beyond its financial impact, the Westdale Dirt Drags has become one of the few remaining large-scale bikey gatherings in Australia. Similar events, such as the Pondy Drag Race, have been shut down across the country due to anti-bikey laws aimed at reducing organized crime activity. The Westdale Dirt Drag stands out as a rare exception, drawing significant crowds and reinforcing the importance of such events not only for the bikey subculture but also for the Gypsy Joker's broader operations. It highlights the club's ability to maintain its influence and generate substantial revenue, despite increasing legal pressure on such gatherings. The last update comes from Victoria where the Victorian police have announced a $1 million reward for information leading to the arrest of those responsible for the murder of notorious bikey Mohammed Akbar Keshtiar, also known as Afghan Ali. Keshtiar was fatally shot multiple times on August 4, 2023, in South Yara, Melbourne. The attack, which occurred in a laneway off Chapel Street, was executed by at least two individuals. Keshtiar was walking with another man when a stolen Toyota Prado slowed down, and a passenger fired shots before the vehicle returned to shoot Keshtiar again. The car was later found burned out. Keshtiar had survived a previous assassination attempt in 2017 and was known for his violent past, including shootings and drug-related offenses. He spent significant time in prison, where he reportedly developed ties with the Mongols MC. Police are seeking information from those with inside knowledge of the crime. If you're looking for more thrilling and edgy bikey updates, don't hesitate, whack that subscribe button, spread and share the video, hit that like button, and drop your thoughts in the comments. And for the true grid spartans out there, consider sending a super thanks or buy us a coffee to show some love. Your support keeps us going and the channel thriving, especially since most of our videos aren't monetized due to all the crime related content. Stay tuned, stay curious, stay awesome, and take care. Wu Tang.